Folks, Pinko Punko here, another video. Um, I'm just gonna kind of split the formats a bit here, see if this one takes off too. Um, I seem to be wearing hats the one where I'm on my computer, so let's just call this like um, Hat as Hell. Working title. So anyway, the reason that I wanted to bring this up uh, because a recent interview made the rounds about the Spotify CEO. Uh, his name is Daniel Eck, uh, and he had an interview with uh, a fantastic publication that actually I found through this interview. It's called Music Ally, so musically, but Music Ally. But uh, one of the things that he did in it that kind of made some people mad, yours truly included, is that he says it's not enough for artists to release albums every three to four years and that they should be working harder on continuous engagement with their fans uh, instead of complaining about not getting enough streaming from Spotify. So in the article, the, the, the quote that he went exactly, he said that um, in the entire existence of Spotify, I don't think there's been a single artist publicly say, I'm happy with all the money I'm getting from streaming. He said in private that they did that many times. Of course, you could say whatever in private. You can't really substantiate that. And there's been plenty of artists who come out and said that Spotify pays them very little. But in public, they have no incentive to do it. And then they said, you can't record music every three or four years like you used to. And I think it would I think it would be enough. So it's on you. You need to do more. And quite frankly, the fact that you think that we should pay you more, it's a little insulting. So as you can imagine, this man is worth uh, billions of dollars. Uh, people did not take this well. It's essentially just kind of kind of throwing the glove down and saying that if you don't get enough money from our streams, that's not our fault, that's yours, that's individual responsibility. Now, obviously with the name of the channel, I think that's a little horseshit. Okay, so I looked into Daniel Eck and uh, everything that um, he gets paid through Spotify. Now, it was a little bit interesting. I didn't really expect this uh, this this information here. Now, uh, I looked it up, and through Forbes, it says that Daniel Eck is worth $4.1 billion, so he's technically a billionaire. Now, that is what he is worth. It's not what he gets paid. He has about almost 9% of the shares of Spotify, and he controls 37% of the voting. His business partner, Martin Lorenzen, um, also owns... Um, between the two of them, they own the majority controlling shares of Spotify. Uh, so I wanted to look into what he got paid. Turns out he doesn't actually draw a salary, but what he does do is if he meets certain uh, goals, he will get bonuses. Uh, typically, they range around a million dollars in cash. One thing that I kind of found here is this article from Music Business Worldwide. It's from 2018 that kind of found specific instances of how he got paid. Uh, there were three qualifications he needed to get the bonus for that year. Uh, there were more than 70 million premium subscribers on Spotify. Uh, more than 150 million monthly users and an annual gross margin of 25%. Now, he got the two out of the first, he got two out of three of them. He didn't reach all of them. Uh, so you'd think that would mean that he did qualify for the bonus, right? Well, that's not true. He got the bonus anyway. And this is also, of course, um, along with the percentage of the stocks and Spotify that he owns. Now, I don't know too much about the rest of his particular financial state, but he's not hurting for money. And it turns out even when you um, you fail your goals, you can still get a good payout there. Keep that in the back of your mind. So, okay, let's go into how much Spotify pays its artists and why they should be pulling up their bootstraps to make more money and to kind of do it themselves they can't they can't keep releasing albums every 3 to 4 years what fucking idiots they need to they need to do the work to get those streams and get that engagement so um there's been a couple of reports about what spotify pays per stream here now uh one of the things that i think is super interesting is that uh it averages between a payout of and i will quote this article from song trust directly that it reported in january 2019 last year spotify pays out between 0 0.00331 and 0 0.00437 cents Per stream to its rights holders. Now, this means rights holders. This doesn't necessarily mean artists. This could mean the label. This could mean promotion. Any deal that the artist has on the other side. So that's the average. Uh, that doesn't mean that every time that you click a stream, that person gets that much money. I kind of feel bad calling it money, because um, it's it's just so little. But I also found this interesting um, this web page by Ditto to find out how much. They
that uh, certain artists get per song. So I just looked up. I didn't want to go too fancy. I actually did an ACDC one, and they're they're not hurting, obviously. So um, I got Spotify open up on my other one here. I'm going to look up The Beaches. Now, The Beaches may not have heard of them. They're uh, a band from Canada. They're based in Toronto, and uh, they aren't too big outside of Canada, but if you've turned on, like, an alternative radio station or even some of the some of the classic rock stations, you've, you've heard a song by them. So they've got a song. Uh, what's their most popular one? Uh, it's T-shirt. So it's got 3,014,642 streams. So I'm going to go into this website here, and I'm just going to give you an idea of how much money they got for that. And that's their most popular one. So for that song, they got estimated around $13,173.99. Now that was for that one song, and it was split between, however, their record label, whatever they do there. So, you know what? Not bad. But let's go to a band like, say... Not too fa the Jesus Lizard. That's a good one I always go to. Now, they're pretty much like cult legends. So, yeah, their most uh, famous song is um, Then Comes Dudley on Spotify, and it's got 1,639,409 streams. So, I'm just going to plug that one in. Okay, so for the Jesus Lizard's most famous song, they got $7,164.22. So, as you can see, uh, bands that have been around doing a the circuit for a while and still not getting that famous, they're broken up. Very big discrepancy there. So I want to actually go into the specifics of the payment that they, they go out. And there was another article by Music, Al Music Ally that came out and it, uh, it broke down what happened. So essentially they don't pay that much per stream directly. What they do is they have a revenue pool and they say that it's about 70% of their total revenue, but uh, according to this article, it's closer to 65%. And that is the pool that they pay out to the rights holders. So I found this article of 2017 and it said that Spotify had guaranteed to pay out big music labels billions over the next two years. So that was going to be until 2019. So they've uh, reevaluated a little bit and COVID-19 has addressed some things and we'll get to COVID-19. But one thing I wanted to say is that in this article that it does not say who exactly gets the money it's just they're paying it out to the record labels so this is really a symptom of how record labels have been exploiting musicians for years there's been tons of stories of uh musicians who have gotten somewhere big with one album and then they they were still broke because of the music label so um i think it's really indicative of daniel Eck to kind of point the finger at bands for not doing enough and somehow it's always been the band's fault that they didn't make it. It wasn't the record labels who uh, gave them loans that they needed to pay back in full, exploitative practices, straight up suing people for using their own songs after they sold the rights. For example, it's just a random offhand uh, comment, but John Fogarty sold all of CCR to, I can't remember which label it was, I'll, I'll list it down here. And then later he wrote a song inspired by a CCR song that he wrote, and the label tried to sue him. So that's just a couple things that are indicative of the, the music industry as a whole. So Daniel Eck is basically telling musicians that they need to focus on more music and more engagement with the audience, otherwise they're not going to make it. But one thing that was super interesting to me is that um, apparently the copyright, copyright Royalties Board, in the US at least, sets the rate that is doled out to royalties of publishers. It was, so basically it was due to rise from 10.5% of a service revenues to 15.1% by 2020. So that was the rate that it's at now is going to rate rise by that much. So one thing that I think was super interesting in this article is that Spotify, Amazon, Google, and Pandora all appealed against these new rates. Uh, and people were fucking pissed. Rightfully so, because you were blaming these mus musicians for not getting enough, but with the opportunity to pay them more comes out, and you basically step on the gas to stop any of that from happening and there's a really interesting article i found from music business worldwide and it's uh, an editorial by ceo and president of the national music publishers publishers association uh david israelite and he responds to the um the news article that uh well the press release that spotify released after they did that because he really d disentangles everything that they're doing uh to lie so for one example here uh, he calls one of the parts of the press release uh, black and white falsehood. So I'll just read it here. It's, uh, so what's the right way to split the pie? Music services, artists, songwriters, and all other rights holders share the same revenue stream, and it's natural for everyone to want a bigger piece of that pie. But that cannot come at the expense of continuing to grow the industry via streaming. The CRB judges set the new publishing rates by assuming that record labels would react to reducing their licensing rates, but their assumption is incorrect. However, we are willing to support an increase in songwriter royalties provided the license encompasses the right scope of publishing rights. And, uh, here's what David Israel 
Daylight wrote in response to that. Okay, there is spin and there is black and white falsehood. Spotify alleges the CRB judges assumed record labels would react to the publisher rate increase by reducing their rates. Not only is that not true, the judges wrote the opposite in their opinion. For those who want fact check, check, read footnote 75 on page 35 of the CRB's final determination. The truth is that unlike songwriters, Spotify and record labels are in a free market. What Spotify pays record labels is negotiated between the parties. How those two parties split the 85% of revenue left over after paying songwriters and their publishers their 15% of revenue is irrelevant and has no relationship to the value of the songs to Spotify's business model. Simple solution. Let songwriters and publishers negotiate the value of their copyright the same way that record labels do. But Spotify opposes that. I think that's a super solid point there. Spotify has basically tried recently to give the power back to the songwriters they wanted to talk about. Uh, they expanded from only record labels uh, putting their artists on Spotify to independents. So why don't they let songwriters and publishers negotiate their own copyright in the same way that record labels do. Spotify is trying to push against that. Uh, and they have gone on the record as doing that in uh, a legal setting. So I, I'm, I'll link all these video, all these uh, sources down there. Somehow, being forced to pay songwriters more or allowing them to negotiate their own rate, don't do that. Just work harder for us. I would like to put out this up against the recent financial results from Spotify. Uh, Q2 is the f only quarter that has um, been mostly lockdowns from COVID-19. Uh, they said that they basically generated revenues of $1.89 billion. All right, so we've gone through the specifics of how Spotify pays it out. It pays it out to the right ho rights holders from the revenue pool instead of, like, individual streams. There's a great article, like, the one that I'm referencing here, I'll, like, I highly recommend you read it. Uh, it's solutions possibly to making them pay more. Unfortunately, Spotify is not done. They have, if you have it, you know that they have a tip jar for musicians instead of directly taking responsible for literally the only reason people go to spotify it's not the fucking interface i'll tell you that much they are offering people to pay them directly there has also been talk of like possibly implementing a patreon sort of uh feature for specific artists through spotify but judging by the way that they've treated their uh musicians I don't think that's a good idea at all. I think there should be a completely different service for that. Um, it's not enough for artists to re release albums every three to four years. He keeps saying that this is the truth. And I don't think that's true at all. I don't think any of the modern artists have gone three to four years, unless it's like a hiatus. Um, Idols, one of my favorite band, I'll just look it up on Spotify right now, but I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, they released their debut album on 28 in 2018 sorry they released their uh, debut album brutalism in 2017 and then joy as an actor resi resistance their follow-up record was 2018 the next year uh and then they released a live album too that's not even counting all of the uh the singles that they put out and uh their most famous song on spotify right now danny nadelko edging out never fight a man with burn it's at 10 million streams almost 11 million streams uh and this is just uh part of the course for newer bands um i don't really go into to pop too much, but if I recall correctly, Charlie XEX um, released an album last year, Charlie, that did really well, and then in the quarantine released another full album. How is that not engaging? She, like the the streams from that album are incredible. In fact, Claws is, is uh, seven and a half million streams. Uh, I don't know any of these songs, but I was just the first one in the top from the latest album, and the album before that was 170 million streams. So. It's not a, a, a question of how the individual musicians break in. If you're a musician, yeah, it's fucking hard to break in. I'm on Spotify on one of my, my bands, and I have less than a thousand streams, obviously, but that's just an example of how hard it is to break into the market. If you have done anything musically from ground up, it's incredibly hard. So I think it's very interesting that uh, Daniel Eck would like to focus on the systemic problems being an individual one, and that's just the greater um, free market values at play here. Uh, it's not the system, it's your fault. And of course, for Q2, they made uh, almost a billion dollars. Now, half of the music industry is live events, and they have been suffering dramatically. So in the middle of a pandemic where you had almost $2 billion of revenue, 
you point the fingers at the musicians and the artists who aren't doing enough what do you suggest they do go out to play venues not everybody has the the resources to do drive-in shows i just think it's disgusting and it's emblematic of the system we're in right now it's not their fault it's not the billion dollar streaming industry's fault or the ceo who rakes in bonuses without even meeting the goals pot calling the kettle black is all i'm saying so yeah if you like this type of video let me know I'll, i might i might shift to this a little bit more i like to kind of half and half with the with the video essays going on here uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted on everything going on here. Like and subscribe, I guess. That's like the first time I've said it, but it really does help out the channel. Or comment if you're angry and you want to call me a soy boy. That's fine, too. Uh, follow me on my handles here, and uh, till next time, fuck Spotify. And I would also like to say before I go, this is not just about Spotify. This is about the streaming industry and the music industry as a whole. Fuck them.